Hey, it's Marie Forleo. Welcome to another episode of the Marie Forleo podcast and Marie TV, the place to be to create a business and life you love. So let me give you a little context for today's episode. A couple years back, back in 2013, uh, Josh and I were here in Los Angeles, and unfortunately, we got hit in a pretty bad car accident. Someone ran a stop sign. We got T-boned. Our car was actually pushed underneath another car. Now, thank goodness, we were both able to walk away from that accident. We were banged up. We were bruised. The car was completely totaled. But I will tell you, on an emotional level, I was not okay. My nervous system was fried. I found myself uh, really afraid to get back into the car. I didn't think that I'd be able to get on my bike again. Even walking around the neighborhood for a bit of time was a struggle. Enter a friend of mine, his name is Nick Ortner, and he happens to be an expert in a healing modality called EFT, Emotional Freedom Technique, also known as tapping. We right now are in the midst of a global pandemic, and when I'm recording this, it's early in April. Things are really difficult. They're about to get more difficult. And one of the things that I'm hearing, not only from people on my team, um, friends and family members, but also folks in our audience, is a really challenging experience right now in terms of dealing with multiple levels of fear, panic, anxiety, and stress. So In the interview that you're about to see, uh, we're going to walk through a tool that I think that everyone should add to their toolkit, especially at a time like this. We're going to do a demonstration. demonstration. We're going to talk about exactly what it is. And I just think that it's something that can really serve you and serve people that you know. It's completely free. It's completely um, natural. And it's very, very effective. There's some science behind it as well. So I really hope that you not only listen and watch this episode, uh, but do the practice and share it with people you love. Enjoy. Nick. Thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. Hi, Marie. I mean, last time we were together, it was also on Skype, yet I'm not far outside of New York. So like next time we got to get in studio together. Yes, we will. Yes, we will. Which speaks to the context of uh, why we were so excited to do this together today. Obviously, we are in the midst of an unprecedented health crisis. Mm. Um, I've been talking to so many members of my team on a daily basis. Uh, We've got thousands and thousands of B-schoolers right now and just talking with colleagues. And, you know, understandably, folks are scared. They're stressed. Uh, there's panic and anxiety that are coming up. And I always am looking for different ways that I can share tools that can help. And you've been doing what's known as EFT. We're going to talk about what that is for years now. And I also just wanted to take a moment to thank you for what you do, because Mm -hmm. uh, back in 2013, which is when we recorded another interview, um, you know, Josh and I had been hit in a car accident. Someone ran a stop sign and my nervous system was just off the chain and tapping. And you, you really helped me because I was uh, extremely afraid to get behind the wheel again, uh, having trouble riding my bike. It was just, I could feel everything was off. And I know so many people live with different levels of stress and anxiety on a normal basis. So you layer on a global pandemic and my goodness, right? Um, So uh, we're going to walk through that. And the other reason I wanted to have you on, you know, you and I have been friends for a while and I just love how committed you and your team are to being of service. You know, you're a CEO, you're a business person. Um, We're going to talk a little bit later about how the tools that we're going to walk through today, how you have them available for six months on your app for anyone who's in the healthcare uh, profession. Yep. We'll get into that later. And then yep. also some incredible free tools for all of us yep. at a time like this. So we're going to get into that a little bit later. Um, and before we get into a full tapping session and a tutorial, can you take us back to the foundation and, and really tell us for anyone watching or listening right now who is unfamiliar with EFT or tapping, just how do we define it? What is it? Yeah, absolutely. So EFT is emotional freedom techniques. Uh, We call it tapping as a general term because we are physically tapping on endpoints of meridians. I've been skipping my face and all my Facebook lives in case people haven't washed their hands. So don't touch your face if you haven't washed your hands. Uh, There's all these points in our body that are points of conductivity. And what the latest research shows is that when we tap on these endpoints of meridians while focusing on the stress, the anxiety, the overwhelm, the trauma, or the thing that is running through our minds, the overwhelmed nervous system, we send a calming signal to the amygdala in the brain. And a lot of your listeners and viewers will know the amygdala is that fight, 
flight or freeze response center. It's a part of us that when something happens, when you were in that car accident, that amygdala fired and it fired for good reason to keep you safe, to react, to fight, to flee. The challenge is when the car accident's over and the amygdala keeps firing and that our brain gets trained for good reason because we've been trained for tens of hundreds of thousands of years to look out for that tiger, to look out for the bear in the woods. You know, I joke that affirmations and positive thinking, all of our ancestors were probably really negative, looking for (laughs) what's wrong at all times, right? Trying to stay alive. Like the paranoid ones lived. You know, the guy meditating on the hill, saying positive affirmations, he got eaten by the tiger, right? Not 100%, but you get the point. We have this negativity bias. We have this part of us that is trying to keep us safe at all times. What the tapping does as we acknowledge these fears, if we go through that accident, the stress, the trauma, the anxiety, we send that calming signal to the amygdala. Uh, The latest research is coming in fast and furious on it. I just saw a study that crossed my desk that showed, it was actually a replication study, which is great. A replication study for those of you that don't know is, hey, someone did a study, let's see if we can do it again. Because a lot of really big things that you read about, they go to do a replication study and they can't make that same result, (laughs) replicate it, right? It's like, it's a problem in science. Like, how do we get this result and aren't able to replicate it? So in this study, there's three groups. The first one did group tapping for an hour. So we'll have a little experience together. We'll all tap together as a group. So they did tapping for an hour. The second group did psychoeducation. So they talked about stress and anxiety and overwhelm. They learned about the body and all positive stuff. The third group read magazines for an hour, okay? And they did salivary cortisol. So you spit in a little tube, you see the cortisol, the stress hormone that is flowing through our bodies right now. For some people right now as they're listening to this, it's sky high through the roof. Other people, it's down lower. They did it before and after. The tapping group showed a 43% decrease in cortisol in one hour. Stunning drop in numbers. The psychoeducation group showed a 19% decrease. And what I love about that, it shows that, because, you know, tapping isn't a competition. It's not like, oh, do tapping instead of cognitive behavioral therapy. It's the best cognitive behavioral therapists out there bring tapping into their practice at the appropriate moment because they know that when we bring our bodies in, we can affect that much more change. So 43% versus 19%, great. And then my favorite is the magazine group up 2%. So, you know, just sitting there, probably you get bored, you're waiting. Maybe you see something stressful in a magazine. Now, what I think about that 2% group right now is I think about people on Facebook. I think people about people reading the news. If it was 2% reading magazines, what is their cortisol doing all day long? And look, we know that we're trying to keep our immune system strong yep. and take our vitamin C and our vitamin D and our zinc and whatever you know we're told to do. And yet we're downloading all this stressful information. I understand it. We're looking out. We're looking for fear. We're trying to stay safe. And we're but looking we're, for we're, facts, right? We've we're looking for facts. Exactly. Yep. We want to be informed. So it's like, okay, be informed, yep. get the facts. But then there's a point when you're just jacking up your cortisol, you're going into fear mode. And then when we talk later about entrepreneurship and business... You cannot be an entrepreneur in fear mode. You can't run a business in fear mode. You can do it in smart mode, but not fear mode. Yep. I love this. So, okay. So for folks listening, right, even if they hear the term EFT, emotional freedom technique, or they hear um, something like tapping and they're seeing you doing this if they're watching this on YouTube, um, for those people that might think it's like skeptical or woo-woo, can you take us back to when you discovered this? Because it's not like, Nick, you just read a book and you're like, oh, I'm all bought in and let me just make this my business and career. I wake up every morning thinking it's woo-woo. You know, I wake up every morning (laughs) thinking (laughs) skeptical and every testimonial that I get from someone, I go, really? It's still, you know, someone writes, oh, I had 30 years of back pain that went away yesterday. I'm like, come on. You know, it's like too good to be true stuff. Um, Yes. But yeah, so I, I, I found it for myself in 2003. I started using it with friends and family. The running joke at the time was, don't say anything is wrong around Nick because he's just going to make you tap on it. It was like, <laughs> oh, you have a headache? Great. Let's do it. It was just like I was so into it. Well, let and, me ask uh, you this. Yes. Did you, were you just on a personal development journey? Like what made you seek this out or, or what was happening in your own life that that's, I, I was that on a personal, your... yeah, I was on a personal development journey. I believe that my first introduction to it was with Tony Robbins. 
And Tony's mm-hmm. a big fan of, fan of tapping. It was a leadership conference in San Diego. He, he wasn't there for the whole event. He came to do an hour. He just demonstrated the tapping. And then I took, oh, that demonstration and, you know, went and researched from there. But that's, that's a wonderful full circle because, you know, he's a mutual friend and he's a big supporter of tapping and all the humanitarian work we're doing around it. So it's like, if I really think back, I mean, I can see him on stage demonstrating it. I think that was my first little, oh, okay, there's something here. He had been doing it for years already. And then I just started using it with friends and family. And in 2007, decided to make a documentary film about tapping uh, with my little sister, Jessica, one of my best friends, Nick Polizzi, who's gone on to make other films and other docuseries. And, you know, uh, with no credit cards, well, with only credit cards and credit lines, no money, we bought $40,000 worth of camera equipment. We set out around the country interviewing experts like Jack Canfield and Cheryl Richardson and Bob Proctor and a bunch of doctors and therapists who were already using tapping. And then we took 10 people from around the world together for a four-day event. And that's the film that we released a year later. Really a budget film, um, edited ourselves, put together ourselves, scraped by ourselves. And it's been the last, you know, 13, 12 years now just spreading that message day after day. Yeah. So from your experience, so for anyone listening now who this is their first introduction, yeah. If we're fe- feeling fearful, if mm-hmm. we're feeling stressed or any uh, level of anxiety or panic, from your experience, this mm-hmm. is just, it's a tool for our toolkit that can support us, right? In it, reducing yeah. that. It's a tool for our toolkit. It's a fantastic complement to meditation. Yeah. Um, if you're not good at meditating or you struggle meditating, this is step one. I've heard from so many people who go, All right. I mean, just think, especially this day and age and everything that's happening, you sit down, you try to close your eyes, take some deep breaths, and it's just like pandemic, coronavirus, my business, all these thoughts running, which it makes sense that they're running. Again, your body's trying to keep you safe. You're trying to get the facts, orient yourself in this world. What am I going to do? So many decisions. We, when we tap, it allows the body to calm down. I mean, think about that 43% decrease in cortisol. That is a physiological marker showing very clearly something happened here because we are feeling the feelings. We are sending that calming signal to the amygdala and then we're letting it go. And that's why you can do that and then go meditate. I got a text from a nurse the other day. She's a nurse at Yale. She's a, she's a local friend of ours and has done tapping along the way and she sends me a text. Her husband has coronavirus, uh, was sick with it for like two weeks. She's got two young daughters. She's still working. She's taking care of the kids, taking care of the husband, being a nurse, just wow. madness. And she woke up at two in the morning having a panic attack, like 2 a.m., middle of a panic attack. She pulled up the app. We have a stop a panic attack meditation there. It's free. And she did that three times through and then went back to sleep. So it's in those moments when we are just beyond overwhelmed, when our nervous system, like what you were saying, your nervous system was fried, where we've got to bring in these physical components. And it's not just me saying it, not only is the research coming in, but psychiatrists, psychologists, medical doctors, I was just texting with a pediatrician from Columbia University who uses it with her uh, people. Uh, Like people are realizing that we have to bring in this physical component to therapy, to talking about things. Yes, and that's why we're gonna do it. And you know, for now, I wanna actually, let's do it. Can you walk us through um, very specifically the tapping points and then let's do an actual demo for someone like, oh my goodness, I I want this, let's do it right now. Let's do it. And you know, I've been doing a lot with with the breath and the lungs and constricted breathing because there's a lot of anxiety there. So what's great about tapping is we can focus on the emotion, but we can also have the physical component to it. Great. All right. I'm game. All right. So if you, if it's safe to do so, if you're not driving in the car, uh, just close your eyes and take a gentle breath in and let it go. And we're going to do another one. And I want you to notice just how full your breath is. So is it full and going down deep into your belly, relaxed and open, or is it tight and constricted and up high in your chest? So go ahead and breathe in and just notice. And as you tune into that breath, just tune into all the anxiety that you might be feeling. How much anxiety is in your breath? How much stress are you feeling right now? 
and give it a number on a scale of 0 to 10. So on the stress, the anxiety, the overwhelm about everything that's happening, just give it a number. And would, would this number be between 1 and 10? Yes, 0 to 10. Absolutely. 0 to 10. Excellent. Yep. And pick whatever number, and then we'll gently open our eyes and do some tapping. So I'm going to lead you through. Marie, will you be my echo? Oh, of course. Does okay. it matter what side we're going on? Nope. Whatever feels comfortable for you. Great. And you can do eyes opened or closed if you know the points and you like to go deeper and close them. And then I'm going to do the face points for this demonstration. If you're out and about and you pulled over to tap with us and you haven't washed your hands, just skip them. It, the process works great skipping points. It's not... Also uh, too, yeah, not to interrupt you, but for the folks listening on the podcast, will you talk us through just in case I, they can't see the visual? You got it. So we're starting the tap on the side of the hand. It's called the karate chop point. It's below the pinky on the outside of the hand. So you're taking four fingers of one hand and tapping gently, whatever hand feels comfortable. And should you Never, switch hands? By the way, I'm going to be the yeah. annoying person no, asking all the questions. No, please do. I love <laughs> it. Because I know that my audience is going to be like, what the, What are we doing? How do I <laughs> yeah, do yeah. it? Am I doing it wrong? Yeah. Great. You don't need to switch hands, whatever feels comfortable for you. Yeah. Great. So we're tapping gently. We're tuning into that breath and repeat after me. Even though I feel so much anxiety. Even though I feel so much anxiety. About everything that's going on. About everything that's going on. I choose to relax and feel safe now. I choose to relax and feel safe now. And we're still on the side of the hand, tapping gently, even though this feels so overwhelming. Even though this feels so overwhelming. I choose to relax and feel safe now. I choose to relax and feel safe now. And one more time, still tapping on the side of the hand, even though I'm holding so much stress in my body. Even though I'm holding so much stress in my body. It's safe to let it go now. It's safe to let it go now. Now we're going to tap through the points. The first point is the eyebrow, inside of the eyebrow, right where the hair ends and it meets the nose. You can use two fingers of one hand, the other hand, or both hands. The meridians run down both sides of the body, and you're just tapping gently and tuning in to that stress and anxiety. All we're doing in this moment is we're actually looking to fire that amygdala because we want to counteract it with that calming signal. So just tapping gently and breathing gently. Now we'll move to the side of the eye. It's not at the temple, a little further in, right on the bone. Again, one side or both sides. Don't worry about getting it perfect. Take a moment to think about just how overwhelmed you are. There is so much going on, and that's okay. There's so much going on, and that's okay. Under the eye, right on the bone. It's safe to feel this anxiety. It's safe to feel this anxiety. Under the nose. And it's safe to begin to let it go. And it's safe to begin to let it go. I hope everyone listening to the podcast right now comes and watches the visual. Just had to say. <laughs> Under the mouth. You're going to go above the chin, below the lip, and that little crease in there, we're tapping with two fingers, tapping gently. It's safe to feel this anxiety. It's safe to feel this anxiety. For the collarbone point, feel for the two little bones of the collarbone. Just go about an inch right below it. You can tap, tap with all 10 fingers of both hands. It's safe to feel this anxiety. It's safe to feel this anxiety. Underneath the arm, three inches underneath the armpit, either side of the body, right on the broad line for women. It's safe to feel all the stress. It's safe to feel all the stress. Now we'll move back to the top of the head and it's safe to let it go. And it's safe to let it go. Moving back to the eyebrow. It's safe to breathe deeply. It's safe to breathe deeply. Side of the eye. I acknowledge all my stress. I acknowledge all my stress. Under the eye. And I begin to feel safe in my body. And I begin to feel safe in my body. Under the nose. The more I relax. The more I relax. Under the mouth, the more my body heals. The more my body heals. Collarbone, the more I relax. The more I relax. Under the arm, the more my body heals. The more my body heals. Top of the head, letting go now. Letting go now. And you can gently stop tapping and take a breath in. And let it go. 
So that was two very quick rounds, and now we tune back in. So we say, first the breath. So go ahead and just take a breath. I know, you know, I tapped earlier this morning, but I've had a busy day, and even in that two rounds, I felt my breath deepen back down into my stomach. So just tune into that. And then also notice that anxiety, the stress, the overwhelm. It was a 10 or a 9 or an 8. What's the new number? What came up? And the tapping process is continuing to do that. So we did two rounds for demonstration. A yeah. lot of the meditations on our app are anywhere between 8 and 12 minutes to go a little bit deeper. And then we, what happens with the tapping process also too is that we start doing it and we think we're worried about one thing, but all of a sudden we realize, oh, you know what? It's really this thing that I'm worried about. So it's almost like self-therapy where it like lets our unconscious mind give us the truth about what we're feeling, what's happening, and helps us to let go. One of the things I love about this too, and why I was so excited to have another conversation with you, especially right now, is this is a tool that anyone can use at any time. Yeah. It's free. It is your own body. You can do it anywhere you find yourself. Um, I'm curious about the meridian points. Yes. So um, where, like, how do we know that these things exist? Yeah. So there's actually, now they have these little machines, devices that measure electricity throughout the body. And you can yes. put it up to these different points and shows that they conduct more electricity. So we're getting more of that, you know, hard science behind it. Uh, the reality is our bodies are very electrical. We don't think about our bodies as electrical because I feel like we're very conditioned to the biological, right? Like I take a drink of something and then it's digested and there's like a very biological process. When we take medicine, it is a pill, right? Yep. Supplements are a pill. So everything is very biological, but our body's fully electric, right? Our brain is nothing but electricity, right? Like our nerve signals are electrical signals. So that's what we're tapping into. We're tapping into that system of electrical signals. I want to also ask more about the scripts. So, um, you know, when I was talking with folks on, on Team Forleo about us doing this interview today, uh, one of the people on my team, she said, I noticed that there's often um, a script, like, you know, yeah. like I completely love and accept myself. Like, even though I'm feeling X, mm -hmm. Y, or Z, I completely love and accept myself. Can you talk to us a little bit about the power of language and yeah. how speaking things out loud, like is speaking it out loud necessary from yeah. your experience? Just yeah, it's it's not necessary. Like I'll do a lot of tapping myself in my mind. It can certainly have a power, right? Because sometimes yeah. when we just say something, I mean, I've tapped with people and they've said, you know, even though whatever, I love and accept myself. And just the second they speak those words, they burst into tears. The mm. second they speak the words, I am enough, they burst into tears. So there's certainly a power in that vocalizing of that language. Um, a lot of people struggle, especially in our community with the whole why are we looking at the negative, right? So it's yes. like they either, they either- I did, by the way. Yeah, I yeah. want to raise my hand to that because I was like, it's not making, it wasn't making sense. So yeah, please keep going. Yeah, so I have the best answer in the world for that. And it yes. comes from our dear departed friend, Louise Hay. So Louise Hay is the queen of affirmations and she's been doing nothing but positive thinking for decades, bringing us Hay House and all her work. And um, I got to sit down with her a couple of years ago and we were- we had been doing some tapping together. And I said, Louise, like, why are we tapping on the negative? Like, you're doing, you're tapping on the negative. Why are you doing this? And she looked at me sweetly. I can see it so clearly. She had her shoes off, her feet on the couch, you know, it's like super doing her thing at the age of 80 or whatever it was. And uh, she says, honey, if you want to clean a house, you have to see the dirt. Ooh. And I was like, oh. Like, Louise Hay coming Louise in. Louise Hay coming in <laughs> strong. I didn't even prep her with that question. There was no prep. It was just like, it was, it was we're going. And, uh, and that's what we're doing. We're saying, yeah, I'm anxious. I'm angry. I'm sad. I'm fearful of public speaking. I am traumatized from that car accident. This is the truth of how I feel. Yes. And the power in that is this is the truth of how I feel. I acknowledge it. And when I do it with the tapping, I can let it go. You know, if we, if you had come to me after your car accident and I had said to you, oh, I got a great idea. So just, let's just do some affirmations. I am safe. I am safe. I am safe. Right? Yes. Your, your brain would have said, no, I'm not safe. That's bullshit. I'm not. That's bullshit. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and that's totally. what happens with a lot of our affirmations. I am a millionaire. I am this. I am that. So right. what the tapping is, let's allow that 
part that says that's bullshit. Let's give a voice to that and say, no, I don't feel safe. I Can don't I, feel happy. Yeah. I want to ask you this because I remember this was one because, again, I have Jersey Marie in my head. She is very saucy. She's very picante. She can be very skeptical at times. And um, I love – by the way, I really love the scripts that we did today. So thank you so much for that. Of and course. I know we're going to talk more about the app in a few minutes. I, I, I was saying to my um, team, I was like, you know, there have been times in the past, not with you, but when like I was first being introduced to tapping mm-hmm. where I was like, even though I'm feeling, let's say, you know, completely anxious or completely mm-hmm. overwhelmed, I completely – completely love and accept myself. That last bit, I was like, yep. that's some bullshit because totally. I do not completely love and accept totally. myself in this moment. Yes. And so I was, I'm so happy to hear you say that. So my question is, and I think I know the answer, but um, again, I, I'm playing the role of audience member who they're, ha- they're so excited about mm. a possible new tool for their toolkit and they want yep. to understand everything they can um, so they can use it to their benefit. You know, if they come across a meditation that has, I love, uh, I completely love and accept myself. And yep. for them, that feels like BS in that moment. Could we say I'm, I'm willing to love and accept 100%. myself? Awesome. 100%. And mo- you know, it's interesting. I've made a transition in the last couple of years. I do believe that phrase is super important, but I've seen so many people struggle with it yeah. that I'll do more of, you'll find more in the app of like, even though I'm faced with this, I choose to relax now. Mm. I choose to allow myself. I might, you know, so. Yes. Uh, These that, like, bridge phrases. Open, the bridge that, phrases. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I love that. Um, so this was another question from the team. Yeah. Is there any way to help us remember to tap? So let's say this is a completely new modality for people and they're like, goodness. And I know this kind of comes around habit formation and of course having the app would help, but anything that you've noticed for yourself um, doing this for decades now, uh, what can we do to help ourselves remember to tap? Yeah. I mean, I, it's, the app has a reminder setting, you know, so <laughs> yes, that's, good. it's, it's to set at two eleven for me for some reason. I set it that way when I was playing with it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have done more tapping with my own app in the last year than I probably <laughs> did in the five years before. And that is a testament to what we've done there because I don't like, I'll never watch this video again, right? I have no interest in seeing myself again, seeing myself on stage, listening to a podcast. I'm just like, well, just not interested, you know, um, with the app, I will pull it up. I'm okay with my voice for some reason. You know how you hear your own voice and you're like, Yeah, you don't want to hear it. It, Totally. It's a great mic. It sounds good. It's got music behind it. I'm okay with it. Or my sister or my brother who are all in the app. Um, And it just helps guide me through it because part of the problem here's the other thing that happens with tapping you'll remember to tap you'll learn the process you'll do it on your own you'll do it for like two minutes you'll feel a little bit better because two minutes will help calm you down and then you're just like in the middle of your day so you get back to it right Mm -hmm. so good you did it for two minutes you feel a little better but when you have the eight to twelve minutes or even the five minutes on some of the shorter ones that it's like forcing you like i'm going to finish this Yep. I'm going to do zero to 10. I'm going to mark it in the app in the beginning. I'm going to do this process. I'm going to mark it at the end. Uh, you're going to have that data for yourself. That's always helpful. great to see. It's super helpful, right? Yeah. That like, hey, um, we just passed 1.7 million completed sessions on the app. Congratulations. And we have zero, thank you. Thank you. We have zero to 10 data points on every single one. So, you know, I can tell you the anxiety session, which has somewhere around 250,000 plays has a 45% decrease in anxiety in 10 minutes. Now that's 250,000 people. Like if we did a study that big, it'd be like, you just don't get data like that. 250,000 people who said, this was my anxiety when I started, this is what it is now, and here's the difference change. So cool. I love that. Um, So any misconceptions or mistakes that you've discovered when people are, are, are getting into this and again, using it as a tool for themselves or others that we should just be aware of? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, putting it into the energy, woo, woo, oh, it's some alternative practice, um, I think is a mistake because I don't think that's where it fits. If we have physiological data that shows a 43% reduction in cortisol, we sort of need to ignore how strange it is that we're tapping on ourselves and we've never done it growing up. I mean, if someone told me that if I did this with my arm, and my cortisol went down 43%, I would do this with my arm, right? By the way, right? you guys, whoever's listening, he's doing like, oh, sorry, like a yeah. wax on, wax off <laughs> for the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, if Mr. Miyagi, if Mr. Miyagi's moves 
reduce our cortisol by 43%, yeah. we have to um, look at that. If we find psychologists, psychiatrists, I have, a, I have a text from a Columbia University pediatrician. She's a director of a bunch of centers in New York. She actually had coronavirus. Um, and she sent me a text. She said, I haven't been able to take a deep breath in three weeks. Three wow. weeks I haven't taken a deep breath. I've been coughing like crazy. I just did one of your tapping and I took the first deep breath in three weeks. So not a cure for anything. Not a, it doesn't su- you know supplement. Yeah. It doesn't supplant medical care. You go see your doctor. You you do what you have to do. But as a complementary practice, and especially in this time when half of us can't breathe because we're anxious, right? Yeah. Like so, you t- imagine taking the coronavirus or pneumonia or the flu or whatever anyone's dealing with right now, and piling in all this stress about what it could be. What if I have to go to a hospital? What can happen there? That stress is going to overload the immune system. So. If I see if there's a Columbia University pediatrician using this in her practice, listen to her. Don't listen to me. I'm just a guy. Like I'm a guy who's passionate about it, who's been sharing it, who's you know has this happen. Listen to the Columbia University professor. Listen to uh, Duke University Hospital that's going to start a pilot study with surgery pre and post surgery pain and outcomes with tapping. So the science and research is coming in hard and fast and. I think that's where we've got to put our focus. All right, let's get weird. Where yeah. has been the strangest place that, or reason, like strangest place you've ever tapped, strangest yeah. reason that you personally have ever tapped? And don't hold back from me, Nick, because I'm a no, because you're fine. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Don't well, clean this up. Yeah, I, want, I know. I'm I thinking. Real, I mean, real. this this isn't strange, <laughs> but I'm thinking of our 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 dear bestie Chris Carr. I took yes. her up a, a water tower when she was afraid of heights. As Brian was shaking the water tower, <laughs> you know, and oh we did goodness. tapping on her fear of heights. But fear of heights is kind of common. The Probably the strangest tapping experience I've had where it was like, oh, boy. I was in Australia and I was speaking for Hay House. I was sharing the stage with Wayne Dyer. We were like on a tour together, all these events, an amazing two weeks. And I forget if I was in Sydney or Melbourne at that time. Melbourne or however they say, you know. Melbourne. Um, and... Uh, we do all this tapping. I have like an hour and a half and I say, okay, you know, I got five minutes left, left any questions. And someone in the audience, she says, my friend right here, um, she hasn't spoken in three months. Her doctors don't know what's going on. She's mute. She can't speak. Can you tap with her? And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you, you kidding? Like, I mean, I got five minutes left. I mean, we went over, obviously. She hasn't spoken in three months. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. Like, right. Okay, let, come up on stage. So we started tapping. She couldn't speak and say what was going on. So I just went with my intuition and I said, even though it's hard to speak, even though whatever was coming forward, I don't have a voice. And she did the tapping, did the tapping, did a couple rounds. And then she like croaks out a couple words and the whole audience. I mean, it was so surreal that it was like, was is this a plant? You know, because right. it was just right. like, what is happening? We tap, we do a couple more rounds. And she spoke like it's like something unlocked within her. I don't know what. There's actually video of this, um, so you know that you can watch it. You can see it happen for yourself. All a natural unfolding of it. Um, but to me, that was an example of like, well, let's just try it on whatever, you know. Okay. Um, Another question. Yes. Does your family, who your family is amazing, yeah. um, do they ever, is it ever like, you know, Nick, you're freaking stressed out, dude. Like you need to tap. Like I think you need to sit down, sit your ass down and tap right now. <laughs> do know, they ever come and throw it at you? They they don't. <laughs> I'm pretty careful with my wife not to throw it at her, you know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, she's done more tapping with the app, you know, like uh, <laughs> I walked in the other night and she was listening to my sister who was her best friend growing up. So that's a whole yeah. like thing there. Um, no, they're usually pretty good at not throwing it at me. And look, I, I get stressed. I get, I mean, most of my stress is or honestly is around just like this deep desire to go faster and like reach more people. Like I get, I know you're the same way. We're entrepreneurs. It's just like, I get uncomfortable when things aren't going a mile a minute in terms of the spread of tapping, right? Yep. It's just like, oh, I see this, I see that. I want this to happen. I want this app to be in the hands of, you know, 10 million people. What do we do? What do we go faster? So that's where my stress comes from. But I've done so much work and you, you know, you can ask my siblings and my yeah. wife is probably the best, right? Like yeah. she'll tell you that I'm very even keeled, um, that 
I feel the like I've done enough works. work. The yeah. tapping works to just feel grounded and present and I'm on mission. So that helps everything. And yeah. Uh, That's awesome. Give me more. Give me more. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, um, okay. Well, I want to talk about now shift gears a little bit and talk yeah. about what y'all are doing for healthcare workers and first responders and giving them six free months um, access to the app. And I'm going to read actually some stories that I was able to get from you because I want people to hear this because mm. this is so important. You know, last night I was watching the news, um, getting my daily dose of the facts and getting my updates. Um, I'm in LA right now as we're recording yep. this, but most people know I am a New Yorker and I am happy to say I am watching Cuomo's daily briefings. Like that's mm. my daily show. <laughs> yeah, I'm totally. really appreciating him right now. I'm appreciating his transparency, um, the level of honesty and also the level of leadership and hope. I think it's real great. Yeah. But last Last night, as I was um, finishing up watching the news, I was crying because mm -hmm. of the healthcare workers yeah. and hearing what is happening right now and knowing at the moment that we are recording this, um, it's April 2nd, we're going to publish this in a few days, um, and just understanding from my interpretation of the facts yeah. that uh, things are going to get a lot more challenging on every level. So I want to read a few things for you guys right now. Courtney, uh, who works at Yale, said, hey, I have to thank you. I had a panic attack last night at 2 a.m., I've never had one like that before. It was bad. I felt like I couldn't breathe and was shaking and my teeth were chattering. A lot of my friends keep reaching out in complete debilitating anxiety. And I think I'm an empath and take it all on, which by the way, Nick, I have a lot of empaths in our audience and a lot of empaths um, on my team. Anyway, I listened to your panic attack tap on the app and I immediately calmed down like immediately. I'm gonna keep reading, so everyone just be patient with me. Allison, who's a respiratory therapist said, thank you so much for offering your free app for healthcare professionals such as myself with the current coronavirus outbreak and having to work in close contact with possibly infected individuals, many stressors arise. I have found EFT to be an essential tool in managing anxiety and stress. And then um, I do wanna share what the professor from Columbia Medical University, she said, after the tapping session I did today, for the first time in three weeks, I can take a deep breath without coughing and the fear, anxiety, and sadness mm. of constricting my chest. It decreased from a six out of 10 down to a two out of 10 in less than 15 minutes. There's nothing that has been as effective in reducing my physical and psycho-emotional discomfort and stress as tapping. So for everyone listening right now, I wanted you to hear that this is from healthcare professionals who have added this tool to their toolkit. Um, so Nick, uh, whether someone's watching or listening right now, if they are a first responder, they are someone in the medical community, or they have someone in their family who's in the medical community, how exactly can they go about getting the six free months access to the tapping app? Where exactly do they go and what do yep. they do? Really easy. Just go to the tapping solution app.com thetappingsolutionapp.com forward slash responder. So thetappingsolutionapp.com forward slash responder. I think there's a link to it as well from both the main tapping solution site, excuse me, and um, and the app site. And they just fill out a form there. Fill Great. out a form, say where they work, say what they're up to, and six free months. I think we just crossed 3,000 uh, nurses and doctors and uh, amazing people. I get choked up reading this list because there's 3000 people and we ask what they do. So they share the things they do. And boy, are there a lot of people out there just helping other people? Yeah. You know, just like every day they wake up and just help. Yes. And that's why I, that's again, another reason I really wanted to do this interview right now. I wanted to support you and do everything I possibly can besides staying home and keeping myself safe and ha having everyone else I know try and do our best to keep us strong. What else can we do? I don't have masks. I don't have access to yeah. equipment, but I'm saying, okay, thinking to myself, how can we support our first responders? Um, because they need us right now and we yeah. need them so badly. And I also want to share too, I feel like you guys also have some, a whole coronavirus stress and anxiety collection that is also free for yeah. everyone right now. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I think you have tapping for kids of different age groups, right? Tell me, yeah, tell me so, what you got. So we've been rolling out, you know, the first one we did right away was just coronavirus anxiety. So um, yeah. that's free. And uh, we've since added release constricted breathing, which is just about opening up that breath. Um, I'm hearing that people are using that in hospitals. So it's like, let's just relax some of that breathing. Um, we have releasing anxiety around being stuck at home. So yeah. it's like some specific stuff there. Uh, my sister just recorded pregnant during a pandemic. Um, yeah. Because, boy, pregnant women struggling in so many ways, so much, I mean, 
whether to go to the hospital, can't go with their husband, can't do this, can't do that. Um, we have from stress to productivity. So, you know, we're all working from home. I've, the amount of calls I've been on when, the, when I've heard the person go, honey, honey, just one minute, I'm on a call, I'm on a call. So that's yes. being said 30 million times a day as yes. we're trying to work and there's kids running around the house. So from stress to productivity, a tapping to just get focused, take the time that you have and make the most of it. Um, we have releasing diagnos- diagnosis stress for people who have been diagnosed with coronavirus. Yep. Uh, stressed about uncertainty, feel safe and secure, releasing shock from fear and worry to peace, sleep support, quiet my racing mind. That's been a big one. Feel safe and ground in your bodies. We now have 21 that are free just in that collection. Awesome. Stop a panic attack. So there is plenty for everyone all free. And can you tell us again for anyone just yeah. there, they've got a lot on their mind, exactly where would they go if they want to access uh, the coronavirus stress and anxiety collection? Yeah. So just go to the, go to the app store, go to your Android store, Google play, and just search tapping the tapping solution and you'll see it pop right up, download it for free. Awesome. Nick, this was so great. Is there anything that you wanted to mention that I didn't get to right now? No, you got to the hard hitting questions and the skepticism when we talked about the nurses and first responders. That also yes. includes cops and yes. firemen. Um, my gosh. Like, and I know. feel like, you know what, this is just my vote. I'm just going to say it. I am looking for different ways that I can do safe things for um, our delivery workers and the truck mm. drivers and yep. the, the folks that are helping to keep our society run, uh, restocking, um, you know, grocery stores and putting their lives on the line every single day to make yeah. sure that all of us have food and stuff. So anything that we can do, Nick, thank you and your team. I know you guys will continue to keep going. I love you so dearly. Mm-hmm. Thank you for being such a force for good in this world and uh, making time for us to Today and please pass along my love to uh, Brenna and June and Jessica and Alex, your whole family. I love you guys. Thank you. Love you too. Thanks everyone. So for you guys listening right now, we would love to hear what you think of this. We'd love you to give tapping a try and tell us what you think of it. As always, the best conversations happen over at marieforleo.com. So head on over there and leave a comment now, or you can hit me up on social. I am most active on Instagram at Marie Forleo. We would love to hear from you. And until next time, stay on your game and keep going for your dreams because the world still needs that very special gift that only you have. We love you and thank you so much. Hey, you having trouble bringing your dreams to life? Well, guess what? The problem isn't you. It's not that you're not hardworking or intelligent or deserving. It's that you haven't yet installed the one key belief that will change it all. Everything is figureoutable. It's my new book and you can order it now at everythingisfigureoutable.com. 